Good evening. My name is Jeff Newman, and next to me is a fellow commentator, Mr. Ricky Knopf. Uh, we are at Dow High School this evening, where we will be broadcasting the Dow High versus Midland High boys swim meet tonight, again from Dow High Natatorium. Uh, right now we've got uh, the uh, number of young ladies, six young ladies, are singing to the, mid or the Dow High uh, swim team, uh, doing a very nice song for Valentine's Day. Dow High is coached by Mr. Gary Strickler and Chili Smith, and Midland High is coached by Mr. Pat Welter. Kayla Williams is Midland's new diving coach. She coaches the divers at both Dow High and Midland High, and she's a former diver from Michigan State University. Um, this evening, the captains for the Dow High swim team are Mr. Zach Hoffman and Mr. Nehemiah Mork, and the captains for Midland High are Rob Dingra, Joe Reeves, and Noah Serbrook. Tonight, Midland High is going to be swimming in lanes one, three, and five, I believe, and then Dow High will be swimming in two, four, and six. Uh, Dow is the home team for the meet today. Um, I am Ricky Knopf. I was a graduate of Dow High School. I am the youngest of five, and we all swam at Dow under Gary Strickler. Um, next year, I will be attending Saginaw Valley State University and plan to swim. The city of Midland is very lucky to have such a fantastic swim program at both Midland High and Dow High School. There are just over 60 swimmers uh, between the schools. Um, Dow High has 42, and Midland High has 20. We're going to pause just a moment for the national anthem. go again uh, my name is Jeff Newman I'm the father of Ben Newman who's a freshman here at Dow High and my daughter Claire is a swimmer in seventh grade we're gonna start the evening tonight with the diving portion of the meet um, the diving will start there are either five or six divers tonight and we'll get started we got five tonight yeah there are five divers tonight uh, two divers from Dow and three divers from Midland High um, as we go along here with the diving, we'll explain a little bit more what's going on. Um, each of the divers is going to do a series of six dives, and they'll go in succession. One will go and do the dive, and the next one will follow. Yes, uh, in high school, they have uh, a series of six dives, um, but today, before we even get to any of the swimming, uh, they're recognizing some of the seniors at Midland High. Um, while uh, we are watching them uh, get some introductions, uh, you are watching this uh, Dow High versus Midland High swim meet on MPS TV 190 on Charter or Channel 99, 99 on at and Uverse in Midland. This event will be showing at the following dates and times. Saturday, Saturday February 14th at 11 a.m., 6.30 and 11 p.m. Sunday, February 15th at 10.30 a.m and 7.30 p.m. For more dates and times or to stream this program online, check the Midland Public Schools website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. The coverage of this meet is made possible in part with a donation from Little Caesars Pizza and the Friends of MCTV. And a big shout goes out to all the volunteers tonight 
which is most everybody that is that is running this show as a volunteer, and thank you to everybody. Uh, the coverage of the swim meet is being produced by MCTV's volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation, orientation and studio training class on March 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to start your training. Learn about MCTV, how to become a TV producer, and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. The cost is just $45, which includes your first year access membership fee. Call 837-3474 or come down to the MCTV studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. Learn more at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. One other quick announcement. One other quick announcement, um, which is kind of a neat thing, is do you or your child or your friend want to be a star? The friends of MCTV are hosting the fifth annual Midland Shining Stars Talent Show on Saturday, April 11th. MCTV will tape your performance in the studio and program will play over the next couple of months. You can come play an instrument, you can come sing, you can come get down in, your, uh, in the Indian position and do the cup song if you want. Uh, viewers will be able to vote for their favorite talent online. Prove you have what it takes to be the next big thing. Call 837-3474 or email midlandstars at yahoo.com to sign up or get more info. Thank you very much. It looks like right now we're getting ready for the teams to do some cheers. Uh, we have Midland High in blue and yellow and then Dow High in their green and yellow. Uh, Dow, Dow High right now is doing one of their signature cheers uh, that they've been doing for the past 13 years since uh, they initially started winning their uh, Valley Championships and Tri-City Championships. Uh, this year is the 13th year in a row that Dow High School has uh, won those and the Tri-City Championships and hopefully in the next few weeks they will win the Valley Championships. Yep. And uh, and at the other end of the pool, now we have Midland High, led by captains Rob Dingra, Joe Reeves, and Noah Surbrook. The captains for the Dow High swim team are Mr. Zach Hoffman and Nehemiah Moore. It sounds like we're getting ready to start the diving. Uh, today, we will have the divers Carter Welter from Midland High, Kyle Ritchie from Midland High, Hunter Granham from Dow, Eric Daniel from Midland, and Jacob Pasek from Dow. Once again, each of the divers, uh, when they get started, will have a series of six dives. I believe one of them each week that they dive is a required dive, which is set up by the state of Michigan. The other five dives are dives that they can select from a, a list of different types of dives. The uh, high school athletic association decides which uh, which dive is going to be required, and each one needs to do that. Um, we will be starting today diving with uh, Hunter Granham. He is a freshman at Dow High School this year, and he won diving at the Tri-City Championships uh, recently with Dow High. When they get ready to do their dives, uh, typically everybody uh, is quiet. There are a series of three judges, typically judges made up of the different coaches. So one of the Midland High coaches, one of the Dow High coaches, and often one of the judges will score and give him a series of three scores. Today, the scores for Hunter's first dive were seven, seven, and seven. Each of the dives um, has a different degree of difficulty, which figures into the score as well. It was a beautiful dive, nice entry into the water. Now we have a diver from Midland High preparing his first dive of the day. Typically for divers, they have uh, 
practice after even the swimmers are in the pool, so they have the practice pretty late at night. Um, they spend countless hours trying to master such difficult moves. Um, and from the replay we're watching right now, you can just see the, the level of difficulty it is to get the full rotations. Right now we have Josh pa or, uh, Jacob, Jacob Pasic from Dow High. Jacob has been diving. This is his first year. Jacob is a freshman. Uh, a lot of divers traditionally start as gymnasts when they're younger. Um, they learn a lot of the acrobatics that they do in the air and then go on to become divers um, later. There's not a lot of young diving competitions. Typically, most of them start in high school. That was a beautiful yeah. entry into the pool. Yeah. Beautiful. We're looking for... When Wa he watching him come up to the end of, edge of the block and, or the diving board and go for his uh, hand first entry, he makes his body completely vertical and it looks beautiful as he goes in. The scoring of each of these dives is broken up into, into three uh, categories. The judges are looking, first of all, at their takeoff. How did they leave the board? Their flight? what they did while they were in the air, how many turns, how many twists, how tight they kept their body. And finally, the third part of the judging is based on their entry into the water uh, so that they come down straight and the minimal amount of splash that they can. The judges will then take a look. Uh, looking at this replay, we see how he approaches the edge of the board and then gets ready for his entry into the pool. Uh, making sure as he enters his body is as straight and rigid as possible. Once the divers take the three individual parts to make up their score, that's then multiplied by a degree of difficulty number, which might be 1.1 or 2.1, which gives you your eventual total score that the divers will get at the end of the competition. Uh, next for his second dive is Hunter Granham from Midland Dow. That was a beautiful dive. That was. That uh, was. In, inward dives are definitely one of the most difficult things you can do as a diver. You have to face the board when, uh, as we watch, uh, we come and watch this replay, you notice how he's facing away from the water when he first uh, is doing his dive. and. It takes a lot of concentration and skill to get the dive completed. Yeah, he kept himself nice and tight with a nice uh, entry into the pool. Hunter uh, has been diving for about a year and a half and also had a background in gymnastics prior to taking up diving. As you watch the approaches, you can tell each diver has a specific way they choose to approach the board and get ready for their dive. Uh, when watching this, you can just see how much thought and pressure goes on to each diver as they approach the board. You'll notice when he entered the water, his legs had come over his body, uh, which will take points away from his dive because he didn't enter the water straight. The two divers uh, this evening for Midland High are Carter Welter and Kyle Ritchie. Uh, there are three, they also have uh, Eric Daniel. Thank you, Ricky. That was the third dive for Jacob Pasek from Midland Dow. You notice on Jacob, he gets very significant lift, feet come over and enters, but arms were spread apart a little bit. You want to be as straight as possible when he enters the water. 
One, one thing to notice is uh, there are two types of dive. Uh, you can have a pike position, which is where your body is as rigid as possible. And then you have uh, essentially just a typical dive where you can go in any sort of contortion of the body to get the dive completed. Um, it takes a lot of concentration to do either one. It's interesting when you... Here we are seeing some tight uh, backflips. Uh, keeps his body nice and together until he completes his full rotation and then makes his body as straight as possible as he enters the water. The, uh, it's interesting, Ricky, the history of diving. Initially, it was called plunging. Uh, before they called it diving in the 1880s, really? uh, when diving was started, it was called plunging competition. Um, they then, shortly after, in the early 1900s, started something called fancy diving, which included the, ad the added acrobatics in the air. That's really cool. Never would have known yeah, that. As we're, watching this, yeah. as we're watching this replay, we noticed that he... Uh, his body wasn't as tight and makes it a little bit more difficult for him to complete his rotation, but he was completed everything before he entered the water. Finally then, um, in 1904, the Olympics added what was called plain diving and fancy diving as two separate events to the Olympics in 1904. Finally, in 1928, they combined these and it became one uh, one diving event in the Olympics in 1928. So it's a relatively new sport uh, based on Olympic timing. Hunter Granham is on the board now doing his fourth dive. Hunter uh, has had a lot of practice over the past few years. Uh, uh, just looking at the replay here, you can see how much he has worked on this and he makes his body as tight as possible to do his rotation before he completes the dive and his uh, entry into the water. Once again, um, in uh, a little extra color here on the, on the diving, the young men today are diving on the one meter springboard. Uh, there's a series of different dives in high school, as far as I know. All diving is done primarily on the one-meter springboard. However, when you get to the college and to the Olympic level, they add... Watching this replay, we see how his feet are not quite to the edge of the board, making it more difficult for him to get the leverage he needs to to get off the board and complete his dive. Yeah. And when he enters, he had a little bit more splash than I think he would have wanted. Yeah, and his feet did come over backwards a little, didn't they? Yeah, and uh, so the other events, other than the one meter that they're doing today, include the three meter springboard. Then there's also a series of solid platform dives. These are the ones that look pretty scary from as high as 10 meters. Uh, they have a, a five meter, a seven and a half, a nine meter, and a 10 meter platform. It's definitely fun to watch all of these new divers, especially from Dow High. Dow High typically does not have any divers, and this year they have three in their arsenal. Um, Midland High has been very lucky and has uh, Carter Welter being uh, an 11th grader. He uh, has had a lot of practice over the past three years to get to where he is now. And the, uh, the diving is such an integral, important part to the swim meets when you compete because there's a lot of points involved. Absolutely. And if you have a close meet and you come to a meet and you don't have any divers, you sacrifice a significant number of points. So it has been a big bonus for, uh, for Dow High this year having, uh, there's two divers here tonight. There's also a third diver actually who's a senior named Jake Davidson uh, who couldn't be here tonight, but they've routinely had three divers at each meet. Uh, coming into this replay, you can just see how difficult it is to keep his legs completely straight as he does his dive. Uh, that was beautifully done. Yeah, going back to the point of uh, points, um, when you're going into an event, uh, the typical scoring is for first place you get six points and then it just uh, progressively goes down to uh, your final at uh, sixth place. And in diving, the you only can have two divers in the top three. That's how they score it. And right off the bat, if you don't have the scores, you go back down to score way behind. 
Um, watching his replay, we get a nice jump off the board. Enters a little bit sideways, not quite how he would have hoped, but still good nonetheless. Next up is Hunter Granham again from, from Dow High School. Once again, uh, tonight you are watching this Midland High versus Dow High swim meet during the diving portion on MPS TV 190 on Charter or Channel 99 on AT&T U-verse in Midland. This event will be shown on the following dates and times. Saturday, February 14th, 11 a.m., 6.30 and 11 p.m. Sunday, February 15th at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. as well. For more dates and times or to stream this program online, check the Midland Public Schools website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. Thank you. Diving in Midland is a difficult event to get into before you come into high school. There really aren't very many opportunities for the athletes to even practice. There are only two pools in Midland that actually have a right. diving board, uh, Dow High being one of them, and then the Midland Country Club is the only other pool in Midland that actually has a functional diving board for the high school and uh, collegiate levels. So if they really wanted to, to learn, they would have to go to like SV, uh, Saginaw Valley State University to even start anywhere with uh, diving in Midland. Okay. He gets a nice jump off the board and uh, when he enters, his body's pretty straight as he enters. Yeah, with a beautiful entry, much better than the, with the previous dive like that. His entry into the water was much nicer that time. And now we have uh, Jacob Pasek back up, um, doing an inward dive. You'll often see uh, when you watch diving uh, on television in the Olympics or even some of the, the nicer big pools, you'll see that they have a hot tub at the end that the divers get into. Um, this sits a little bit sideways with my son who's a swimmer. Uh, watching okay. Jacob's uh, replay, uh, he's definitely had a lot of progress throughout this year, uh, being a first-year diver. Uh, you can tell he has his gymnastics background, and he keeps his body very straight as he goes all the way through his dive. Yeah, the, the divers use those hot tubs at the end to stay warm uh, in between. My son, who's a swimmer rather than the diver, always feels a little bit left out by that, that they don't get to get in that hot tub. I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> He thought if he was won the Powerball the other night that he was going to build two big hot tubs here at the pool so that the swimmers had a hot tub to get into as well. That'd be nice. Unfortunately, we didn't win it. Wow, that was a beautiful that entry. Was, beautiful that was entry fantastic. Pool that time. Uh, Carter, Carter is a great diver. Uh, what, just coming back up to this replay, you can just see how much he puts into his dives. Keeps nice and tight until he completes all of his rotation and then en enters into the pool. We're nearing the end here, I believe. I think this may be the... The announcer is uh, reading off the description of the dive based on, based on the number and, and how many uh, to describe the dive that Hunter is going to do and uh, getting near the end of the competition here now. As we start reaching the end of the dive, uh, we'll come watch Hunter go through uh, his very complex dives. He enters the water great in that one. That had a lot of uh, difficulty throughout it. Uh, multiple rotations, spins, and uh, flips involved. One, two, three. Lots of moving yeah. parts through that dive. That's beautiful. Uh, Ricky, do these, do these divers, when they practice, do they practice in, uh, in the cottage cheese pits, if you, if you will? Do they do a lot of their flips on trampolines and things like that, too? Uh, sometimes they do. Uh, I know that here, when they're practicing in the water, the, if they're afraid to get a little bit hurt and smack their backs, they put on a wetsuit. Uh -huh. uh, it helps uh, relieve some pressure when you hit the water. Um, I've also seen a couple divers put on life jackets uh, okay. because the life jackets uh, have so much foam that it helps stop the pain from reaching their body. Um, 
But right. one of the cool things about here is Dao Hai has uh, a little uh, recording uh, that they can use. Uh, they've got a little TV that they pull out whenever the divers are getting ready, and they just watch their dives over and over to see what they need to fix and how to do it. Uh, and Kayla Williams is the diving coach for both Midland and Dow and has been working with them a lot this year. I would think that would be pretty critical, being able to watch yourself on video to see it. Everything seems like it happens so quickly uh, when you do it, that to uh, be able to critique it that way. It's very important. Yeah. Uh, and then well, just you, coming up to this uh, next replay, you can see how when he jumps off the board, he keeps his body completely straight. And it's one of the most important things when it comes to diving is keeping your body as rigid as possible before you enter the water. Isn't, isn't the height equally as important? Aren't they trying to get as much height as they can most of the time? Well, well, one of the things I've learned throughout the, my four years of high school dive, or swimming and diving um, is that when you're, you want to get as high as possible and stay as close to the board as possible without hitting it because right. that's not exactly what you want to do. It hurt a little bit. <laughs> it does make me nervous. I've watched several times where their chin is within inches of the, of the board. Yes. It does make me yeah. This is a replay. One thing that uh, I've seen uh, when my brothers were swimming in high school is uh, there was a di used to be a diver at Dow High School who he was expecting to do a flip and land in the water, and he actually landed back on the board. Oh, my. <laughs> Good thing his, it was a feet-first dive. <laughs> yeah, there's not much padding on those boards. It's pretty no. Low. no. That was a beautiful dive. That was, uh, had to be at least two or three somersaults involved in that dive. For the middle coming back and watching this replay, just he is putting his body as close together so that he's as small as possible before he enters the water. And he over-rotated just a little bit, so he had uh, a larger splash than anticipated, but a beautiful dive nonetheless. Uh, today, uh, there are going to be two people who are working the clock in the office. Um, we have Amy Strickler, who's running the clock. Uh, she makes sure that the clock and the scoreboard is set for the correct event and that the clock runs and starts for each race. She, Amy. she also does the announcing and uh, lets us know uh, what, is, what is scheduled next, what events are up, and we'll often report uh, who won each heat or who won each race uh, yes. to let people know. Uh, Hunter came up for his dive. Uh, I believe this is his last dive at the competition, yes, and he was, he had a pike position, which makes it so that he has to keep his legs as straight as possible while still being able to complete the full rotations. Yeah. It's like he didn't have quite enough air to keep get himself straight after the dive there, Not just quite. to finish it. And so they're on their last series of dives. Once again, uh, the coverage of this meet is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation or studio training class on March 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to start your training. Learn about MCTV, how to become a TV producer, and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. The cost is just $45, which includes your first-year access membership fee. Call 83... key to this dive is to make sure you, before they enter the waters, to um, fold in, in half essentially. And right. then once they do that, they try to get their legs back up above them so they can enter the water and straight. And get yourself back away from the board. I see there too, when he yes. left the board, he pushed out several feet to, to clear himself. Jacob Pasek is up for his final dive now. That was great, a lot of height for Jacob on that dive. Yes. Jacob's been fighting. You talked about injuries. He has been fighting. You see his dive. He achieves what appears to me to be very good height on this dive. I know one of the goals of the divers here is uh, throughout the year they try to increase their height as much as possible. Yep. And, uh, they, they work and work to touch the ceiling tiles ah. <laughs> on, on the pool. Right. And it was a nice entry. But Jacob's been fighting a little bit of an injury to his lower back uh, sustained early on in the season when he was That's diving. So. So it's not without, uh, not a sport without it, potential injuries, unfortunately.
Pryor just nice. had an excellent dive. dive. Uh, a lot of difficulty in that one, getting the complete rotations. Um, notice he had his hands on his legs right away. Yes. Uh, very, you'll notice when you watch this, he has his hands right away on his legs to keep himself tight right there to achieve as many rotations as he can. That was a beautiful dive. And that concludes the diving. Hopefully here in a minute we'll be able to give you some results on the, on the diving here for this evening. Uh, uh, speaking of scoring, uh, in the office we also have Randy Hall. Uh, Randy is the one who keeps track of the swimmers and divers' times and scores per dive. And uh, he also makes sure that when the races are going, the backup timers are making sure they're doing their job. Uh, with, each, with each race, they have uh, six timers for each lane that have handheld timers, and then they have the scoreboard uh, where they have one, an, another timer making sure that the clock stops at the appropriate time. Um, and uh, they also have one extra person in case uh, one of the diver or one of the timers clock doesn't start, malfunctions, or uh, they just completely forget that the race is starting. Yeah, it's a very redundant system, isn't it? You, you can imagine if you, if you work all year and you come to a meet to achieve a time and something happens on the, the touchpad and it doesn't work, uh, you need as many backup times as you can. Go ahead uh, real quickly um, before we go to, uh, there will be a short break. The results of the diving competition in fifth place from Midland High was Mr. Eric Daniel. In fourth place from Midland High, Mr. Kyle Ritchie. In third place from Dow High, Mr. Jacob Hassett. In second place from Dow High, Mr. Hunter Granham. And in first place from Midland High tonight in diving, Mr. Carter Welter. The next event, we will start with the swimming. The first event of the evening will be the 200 medley relay. Uh, the 200 medley relay is four individuals from each team uh, is put into one lane. Um, it, it starts with the backstroke, um, and then the, each person swims 50 yards of each uh, stroke. Um, so the first person will swim 50 yards backstroke. The second person will then swim 50 yards breaststroke. Uh, the third person will swim 50 yards butterfly. And then to anchor off the relay, there will be uh, the last swimmer will swim 50 yards freestyle. Traditionally, there'll be two heats of this. Um, the scoring begins on the final heat. So we'll be back shortly with the 200 medley relay. Thank you. Are we live yet? We have the 200 medley relay starting up here. Uh, and right now we have the backstrokers in the water. The 200 medley relay is, again, it's four swimmers per, per lane. Uh, each swimming in a different stroke, uh, starting with the backstroke, then it goes to the breaststroke, the butterfly, and then the, finally the freestyle. You'll notice tonight when you're watching, uh, there are three lanes swimming right now. The Dow team tonight are wearing pink swim caps. Uh, this is a breast cancer awareness event. Uh, they have some special shirts uh, that you'll see that says I swim, as well as the pink caps tonight uh, in support of uh, breast cancer research um, and making a difference. So in right now, in lane two, from Dow High, we have John Hopper, Eddie Zong, Jonathan Harkness, and Jacob Pasek. In lane three from Dow is Koki Nishida, Grant Ostergaard, Seamus Bennett, and Matthew Bone. And finally in lane four, 
is Parker Thurston, Trevor Harkness, Joey Park, and Nick Konovalenko. Uh, lane one is going to be the lane closest to us, and then uh, consecutively two through uh, one through six, all the way to the far end of the screen. Um, Relays are really one of the most fun events in the meets because it, swimming is typically an individual sport. Uh, most of the time you're swimming just by yourself doing the work all alone. But in relays, it comes down to four individuals working to get the top time of the heat. In this heat, I think I put my money on Dow. What do you say? I see uh, three. I would, I would agree with that statement. Three pink caps out there. As you know, there's four divers in each, or four swimmers in each relay, excuse me. Um, this is heat one of two. Uh, these will not score towards points in the final heat. Uh, the next heat, two of two, it'll be the top. Top three relays uh, score points. The top three in the, next, uh, in the next heat. There are two heats of this 200-yard medley relay. And relays are really important because each heat of relays that scores points is double what an individual race would count for. Uh, in relays, you get twice as many points for the winning team, but you don't score through the six swimmers. Correct. And uh, Dow is uh, really blessed this year to have a big team with over 40 swimmers, which makes you very deep when it comes to putting swimmers in relay events. Each swimmer during the swim meet can only swim a total of four events. Two right. individual events and two relay events. And once you swim those four, you can't swim anymore. So it's really important to have a large number of good swimmers. The, the cool thing is when you're swimming, they, you can only swim two individuals. But if the coach wanted to, he could put you in all three of the relays. And you could swim one individual after that. So if you have somebody who's really good at relays, that's where you want to put them. If they don't have a strong suit necessarily individually or if it's better for the team to have all of the relays. Right. And they really are, once again, a really fun event uh, when it's competitive and it's close, when you have teams, or even at the state level, when you have different states competing against each other. And now we're going to be get ready, getting ready for the second heat. Uh, in lane one, we have Midland Dow with Alex Owens, Ben Newman, Steve Zhu, and Noki Kahita. In lane two from Midland, we have Joey House, Sage Floyd, Justin Johnson and Jacob Strabel. Uh, lane three for Midland Dow, we have Tyler Beefus, Noah Bame, Nehemiah Mork, and Bo Matthews. In lane four, we have Noah Shiver, Nicholas Burchard, Noah Sherbrooke, and Joe Reeves. In lane five, we have Nick Pixton, Ben Brandstadt, Zach Hoffman, and Jacob Brzuk. In lane six for Midland, we have Zach O'Dell, Matthew Lyle, Scott Joffrey and Jared Homan. You'll notice right now that uh, the young men are swimming the uh, breaststroke portion of this relay. Uh, it's interesting that breaststroke was the first stroke back in the 1880s that was recognized uh, initial swimming, which we can talk about a little more later. Yeah, right now it's really cool is that the Dow High School's A and B relays are really neck and neck right now. Uh, they are going to put each other into a great competition against each other. Um, and then Midland High is coming in uh, shortly behind uh, Dow High. Uh, and then we have another Midland High team coming up behind them. And the, the race is just going. We got lanes three and five close right now. They're very turning very, at the very same close time. race on the turn. We're going to race down to the down to the wire here. This is this is really fun. Got both looks like, Dow High looks teams like Bo making it difficult. All right. Oh, that's wow! A, what a one tenth of a second away from each other. That's a that's a good finish for both. That's of them. a great finish. And then coming in, we have in uh, third place. We have Midland Dow, finishing now in fourth place. Midland High. That was a wonderful finish between the two between the two Dow schools. That was a good even race throughout the entire one. Uh, how 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 far is one tenth of a second? Describe that to me. <laughs> one tenth of a second is really <laughs> nothing at all. Yeah. It's here, less than the length of the fingertip. Here uh, comes a close it, up. Here it, they're going to show us. Uh, if you watch on your monitor now, they're going to show us. Nope. 
they were going to try to show us. Instead, we're seeing some diving. Oh. <laughs> uh, after each relay, uh, one fun thing is that the swimmers get to uh, re-enter the pool to warm down. Um, they get 25 yards to kind of uh, get the lactic acid out of their bodies. Um, uh, one thing I know that Gary Strickler really wants here is to try to get uh, a couple more lanes so we can have a warm down facility, which is crucial for swimmers. If you go straight into a race and then don't have a time to recuperate your body correctly, it can be detrimental for your next event. Okay, here comes our replay on that fantastic finish in the 200 medley relay. <laughs> well, we're, we're trying. Here it is. We'll there see we it go. up close. Wow, you can see that lane three just barely out touched lane five. The finish it's is that so close crucial. That's a great finish. Next up is event number two. This is the men's 200 yard freestyle. There'll be two heats. This is heat one of two. In lane two from Midland Dow is Mr. Luke Drumright. In lane three from Midland Dow, Drew Hersel. And in lane four from Midland, Mr. Koki Nishida, who uh, happens to be Dow. one of our, from Midland Dow, who happens to be one of our seniors tonight. The 200 freestyle, I'll let Ricky talk about. This is an event he knows a little bit about. Yeah, he suffered is, through it. <laughs> this is the event that uh, Gary really liked to put me in. Uh, it, it's uh, essentially a long distance sprint. Um, you don't really have a chance to build up through it. You, your first 50 should be close to your fastest. You wanna go out um, and set your pace. Uh, then it comes to your second and third 50 uh, where you kind of build up your kick throughout. Uh, the kick is the most crucial part of this event. Uh, you, you don't want to kill your legs right away, otherwise you're kind of toast for the last 50. And then when you get to the end of it, you don't really have anything left in the system. You just go as fast and as hard as possible. How many laps is the 200, Ricky? Uh, the, the 200 freestyle is eight laps of the pool, so one lap being down and then two being back. Um, and then progressively, uh, for you try to increase your tempo throughout. Um, the 200 is a really difficult event to master. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, and uh, Chili Smith really likes his distance sets, so he, uh, he, he puts you through the pain to figure out where you have to go, how you have to swim your race to get the good times. We have a nice race developing between Drew Hersel and Koki Nishida, both from Dow, um, almost neck and neck here at the wall. I, I think they both hit the wall at the same time, yeah. actually. Yeah. So this is going to be another, uh, another great finish here, down to the wire here. Uh, and then we have uh, Luke Drumright. Right. Uh, I know yeah. he was really, really excited to swim this race. It's and never, the never winner, give up. the winner in lane three, Drew Hersel. What a great, uh, great race! Another one. And those were some two pretty good times coming out uh, for the 200 freestyle. It takes a lot of uh, time to develop the speed and the and the distance. You um, notice just a little better kick by Drew right at the very end. Yes, absolutely. Propelled him forward absolutely. by about a half a body. That's a great race. Uh, for Drew and Koki. In this, in this next heat, the uh, person to watch for is Kevin White. He uh, has a Division II state cut already, actually. Um, uh, the state cuts uh, come from the year prior. They determine who uh, is going to be coming back the next year and who, how many people uh, even got the cut the year before. Um, Last year, the 200 free cut was around a 149.5. Uh, and this year, it's at a 159. Wow. Um, so goes back a full second. Uh, it gives uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of swimmers a chance to get the cut. Well, look right, look right now, pretty, uh, pretty touching moment. Uh, Luke Drumright is finishing his, his last lap, and he's got the whole Dow team down at the end. And, Actually, one of his teammates in the lane next to him cheering him on for the last 10 meters, 10 yards here. Good for but you, a Luke. Great race for Luke. Let's go, Luke. All right. Luke, Luke is someone to definitely look yep. up to. Uh, he 
he works super hard and doesn't, yeah. as you can tell, he All does right. not give up. He will go until he finishes. You hear the applause for Drew. Good for you, Drew, Luke. What a great race. Uh, all right, we're going to be starting uh, heat two pretty quickly. Um, and lane two from Midland Dow, we have Lucas Braganza. Braganza uh, and then lane three from Midland Dow, we have Kevin White. And lane four from Midland, we have Eric Parsons. And then lane five from Midland Dow, we have Brigham Ostergaard. I'll make note, just a quick note, that Brigham Ostergaard is one of our seniors tonight for Dow High. Uh, once the starters blow their whistle, uh, they cue all of the swimmers to get up onto the blocks. Um, and that's when they get ready for the uh, official start to the race. Um, and the start of the race is one of the most important parts. Uh, it's where you get your initial push and your initial momentum to make it so you have a, a good beginning to your race. Um, the other key points in every race comes from the flip turns, which Kevin is completing right now. Uh, if you, you, you want to keep your head in the water and not breathe, uh, going from the flags into the wall and then also out until past the flags. Um, because every time you breathe, you're losing a little bit of momentum because you're displacing right. more water than you need to. What is, Ricky, what is the nature of the two flags at the end of the pool? What are those for? Uh, the true purpose of the flags is for the backstroke events. Um, it accues the swimmers that they are a set distance away from the wall. Uh, I believe it is five meters away. And from that point, they have a count to tell how many strokes they need until they either finish the race or they go to, to start their, their flip, flip turn. turn. Okay. So they've actually, in practice, they actually count their strokes so they know when they're on their back and they can't see the wall, they know how close they are then. Absolutely. Um, before every meet, uh, I know Gary especially makes sure, makes you practice your turns in each pool because every set of flags to the wall is different and your stroke count changes dramatically, surprisingly, from pool to pool. Um, in high school, uh, they generally are able to get two strokes in before they start flipping onto their stomach. Um, but other than backstroke, the flags don't really carry much of a purpose. Um, and, it, and it is pretty technical, correct me if I'm wrong, when you do that turn and when you come into the wall that the officials are watching that you can only do so many when you flip over onto your stomach. Yes, yes. You're only allowed one forward stroke with your arm. And uh, this race is getting close to finished and uh, Kevin White came in first with a 155.73. Uh, that's good enough for a Mr. Cut this weekend. And then in second place, we have Lucas Braganza with a 203.52. In third, we, oh, sorry, that was Brigham Ostergaard. Uh, in third, we have Lucas Braganza with a 205.07. And then in fourth, we have Eric Parsons with a 214.89. Good for them. That's great. Great race, great race for Kevin. Now, um, now coming up, we're going to have the 200 IM. Uh, this is kind of like the medley relay, but they're doing it by themselves. They have all four strokes in one race. They start with the butterfly, then they go into the backstroke, to the breaststroke, and then finish with freestyle. This is sometimes referred to as the decathlon of swimming, just yes. because you have to do all four disciplines of swimming and show that you're an all-around swimmer. Uh, there's different distances. This tonight is the 200 IM. Um, in this we have in lane two, Jonathan Gorman from Dow. Jo in lane three, Joey Park from Dow. And in lane four, Naoki Kihara from Dow as well. And these swimmers, um, the kind of the equalizing factor in the IM usually tends to be the breaststroke. The breaststroke is an event which, based on time, is the slowest of the events. Yes. It's also technically very hard and probably the stroke that most people have a difficulty mastering. If you were to ask my mom, she would tell you that I swim breaststroke backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, it, and if you are a really good breaststroker, you can make up a lot of your uh, weaknesses in other strokes, and you'll see, you'll see somebody oh, a quarter pool ahead, and when they get to the breaststroke, a really good breaststroker 
can cut that distance in a hurry. Absolutely. Uh, we want to put a little shout out and uh, the coverage of this meet is made possible in part with a donation from Little Caesars Pizza and the friends of MCTV, so thank you. Uh, we also want to let you know that the coverage of this swim meet is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you would like to work on the shows like this one that we're doing right now, come to our next orientation and studio training class on March 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to start your training. Learn about MCTV, how to become a TV producer, and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. The cost is just $45, which includes your first year access membership fee. Call 837-3474 or come down to MCTV Studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Down Memorial Library. Learn more at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash mctv or follow us on Facebook. Now is, finding, now is the time where they have to dig, swimmers have to dig deep into their gut on the final freestyle. Uh, they're tired from the previous three strokes. They give it everything they've got. We've got in lane three there finishing up Joey Park. It's going to be followed very closely in lane four by Naoki Kihada. And finally in lane two by Mr. Jonathan Gorman. Good All with them. great races. Good times, good times. Uh, coming up into the next heat, uh, the final heat of the 200 yard IM, uh, we're going to be having uh, in lane one. Okay. Oh, we're going to get good a quick up. replay. Uh, yep. Good finish between Three, these six. second. Er, right now, it looks like we got a good finish here's from your, our first place. Yeah, it's your winner, Joey Park, right there. And then a, if you watch close to behind Strong finish to the wall. Very strong. He definitely had something left there, didn't he? Absolutely. So if you watch coming on, every swimmer courteously stays in the pool till the end. So Getting ready for our heat two. In lane one from Midland Dow, we have Bo Matthews. In lane two from Midland, we have Vincent Prez. In lane three from Midland Dow is Nehemiah Mork. In lane four from Midland is Rob Deep Dingra. In lane five from Midland Dow is Jacob Prezuk. And if you watch in lane three, you see Nehemiah extending quite a lead already. Uh, Nehemiah, as a junior, already has, sent, has set several of the records uh, here for um, the Midland Dow team in the pool and, and continues to improve, really is an amazing swimmer in, in all four strokes. Absolutely. Let's see if he can uh, beat the, uh, break the two-minute mark today. That'd be a, a good feat for him for the season. Uh, the 200 IM, it's really a goal for the elite athletes to meet two minutes and surpass it. Uh, the closer they get to two minutes, the more they have to train to get the time down. Um, it's really, really difficult for these individuals to get to such a great feat. Have a nice race developing in lane four and lane five between Rob Dingra and Jacob Brazu. Uh, Staying nice and close. Jacob's definitely starting to pull out on the breaststroke. You can see how critical breaststroke yep. is in the race. My son swam with Jacob as they were growing up in the USA in the Barracuda club team, and Jacob's specialty always was the breaststroke. Uh, as of late on the Dow team, he's done more freestyle. Um, and if you look at the meet, uh, what races are ran, the freestyle is probably 75% of a swim meet. You've Absolutely. got the 50 free, the 100 free, the 200 free, the 500 free, and two freestyle relays, so you need a lot of a lot of good freestylers to be competitive. And so here comes Nehemiah, Nehemiah to, the to the wall in lane three. Didn't quite get to the two minutes. Uh, I know they're, they're, they've been working really hard for this uh, upcoming weekend, and they've had two meets now this week already. Um, so they've got a lot of work ahead of them, but a great swim coming in from those first three finishers right now. Second place, Jacob Kuzuk, and third place, Rob Dingra. And then we have a fourth place uh, with Bo Matthews uh, in lane one. And finishing up in lane two, Mr. Vincent Prez from Midland High. I can definitely tell you the 200 IM is one of my least favorite events. <laughs> it is definitely one of the most difficult ones to train yeah. for because you have to be a master at all four Stroke event or four strokes. Okay. 
lot of, uh, lot of cheers there for them. I think it's because he got his best time ever. Ah, okay. Good for him. Good team spirit here and good support for everybody from the, from the top swimmer to the other swimmers uh, further down the list. Edwin High definitely knows how to cheer on their teammates. Yes, they do. Our next race is event number four. This is the men's 50-yard freestyle. This is my favorite. Uh, this is fun. This is fast, all-out sprinting. It's one end of the pool. It's two laps, down and back, as fast as you can go. Uh, these races are off, often won by a hundredth of a second, sometimes a tenth of a second, very little. Absolutely. Uh, but it's just a flat-out sprint. This is the definition of sprinting and swimming. In this, we have five heats. This is heat number one. The, in lane number three from Midland Dow, we have Jad Safadi. In lane number four, Seamus Bennett from Dow. And in lane number five, Matthew Bone. You'll notice as we go, when a, when a 50 freestyle like this has five heats, that traditionally the first heat have the slower times and the final heat tend to be, it's called seeding, and the faster swimmers will swim in the final heat. So heat one will, will tend to be the timer, the swimmers with a bit slower times. And as you go to heat five, that will be the timers that, or the swimmers that have the best times. And it looks like we have a season best time for our uh, first finisher, Seamus Bennett with a 30.12. Great job, Good. Seamus. Good. And then uh, our, our second place finisher uh, dropped a fair amount of time. They, yep. uh, Matthew Bone ended up dropping two seconds in that 50 free. Good for him. Great job for Matthew. You'll also notice on this one, you watch the finishes. If you're a timer, you tend to get wet with this one. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of splashing going on. Uh, now we're starting heat two of five. In lane two from Midland Dow, we have Derek Yam. In lane three from Midland Dow, we have Parker Thorson. In lane four from Midland High, we have Corey Clark. In lane five from Midland Dow, we have Trevor Harkness. These swimmers, if you'll notice, some of the best swimmers will breathe only once, maybe twice the entire race. Um, it looks they, like he lost his goggles. Uh oh, that's no fun. Yeah, I guess the technical term from my children for that is eating your goggles. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Uh, no, can't see after that happens. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the end of that one, uh, he most likely will end up being disqualified because he, he used a little bit of momentum from the bottom right. of the pool. Um, that's it's too bad. Had a nice finish for Parker Thorson from Midland Dow. You just with watch a, this. You see how much he's kicking and reaching for the wall at the end. Uh, that was an, every, another, another personal best for him. Absolutely. Uh, especially when you're trying to finish the race, uh, the goal is to get your body uh, as much momentum as possible as you reach into the water at the end. So this next is heat three. This is three of five. In lane one from Midland Dow, Jonathan Harkness. In lane two, Eric Daniel. In lane three, Eddie Zong. In lane four, Connor Babin. In lane five, Noah Arthur. And in lane six, Mr. Brady Wing. Here they go. Starts are always fun to watch because you get to see so many different styles. Some people yeah. like to just go straight into the air and go out. Some just yeah. go straight into the water. It's a lot of uh, different style for starts. And so much of this race, whether you win or lose, is made up on how quickly you do your flip turn and, and your how start. good your start is. Both yes, of those yes. two things are at least 25% of the race. So good race, finishing finish three in swimmers three. in 27 seconds. Wow. Your winner of that heat in lane three, Eddie Zong. Gonna see a replay like all here. Of them, all of them got their best times. Just flat out sprinting as fast as they can go there to the end. And at the end, they dive to the wall. A lot of, a lot of water splashing onto the deck in that That's one. That's <laughs> true. And now we are gonna be starting heat number four of five. Uh, in lane one from Midland Dow, we will have Daniel Haynes. In lane two from Midland, we will have Reese Bartos. Lane three from Dow, uh, Christian Benick. In lane four from Midland, Ryan Heath. Lane five from Midland Dow, Aiden Saggers. In lane six from Midland, Zach O'Dell. And we had a little bit of a missed start there in, uh, in lane six. 
you get to start it over. Sometimes they misinterpret what they hear from the judge. And of course, they're leaning forward just on a, on a moment's notice, ready to go. They are a much better start that time. Sometimes it's difficult because uh, the starters, if they see a slight movement, they have to wait until everybody relaxes. And uh, it's really hard once you're on the block to stop your uh, movements Moment, yes. once they get you ready to go. If you're leaning forward, it's pretty hard to stop that. You have nothing to hold on to there. They don't want you to lean forward because right. it's kind of against the rules, right. but you do it anyways. <laughs> So that race, great race in, in lane three, Christian Benneke from Midland Dow. He's won a 26-19. Close, close to his best, close to his best. Watch the finish here again. Perfect week. A lot of water being moved there in lane one. And this will be, this is your final heat. These are the fastest swimmers here in your final heat. In lane one, Ben Brandstadt. From Midland Dow, in lane two, Mitchell Enns from Midland. In lane three, Zach Hoffman from Midland Dow. In lane four, Joe Reeves from Midland. In lane five, Nick Pixton from Midland Dow. And in lane six, Justin Johnson from Midland. Thinking in this one, Nick Pixton and Zach Hoffman are gonna have yeah. a really good race. Uh, Hoff He's got Zach a lot to be just on the brink of getting a state cut. I love that. It looks like a washing machine out there always when they're doing this. The, that the was water a great turn for up. both of them. Great race to the finish in lane three and five. Oop, looks like it's going to come straight to the end. Wow. wow. Four, one, four one hundredths of a second. <laughs> that close. That's really close. <laughs> Your winner in lane three, Zach Hoffman. And now we're going to come up for a replay and get to watch such a close finish yet again. You see, he actually caught him there in the last little bit in lane three. Just a little better kick right at the very they end. They both Great went race. into their finish at the same time. That's fun to watch. Yes, it is. It helps to be long. The nice yes, long yes. arms make a difference at that time. And now that the 400 or the 50 freestyle is over with, uh, the swimmers have uh, a brief warm down. And then there's going to be, uh, e typically, this is when the diving would happen. Uh, since that already started, uh, Mid Midland Dow is going to be doing their senior night. So they get to recognize uh, their four seniors, uh, which uh, the seniors, all, there yeah. are only three of them here today. Um, right. We have Koki Nishida, uh, Zach Hoffman, and then Brigham Ostergaard. Uh, um, Right now on camera, we have Chili Smith. He's the assistant coach from Midland Dow, uh, talking uh, probably about uh, Luke Drumright swim because that was his mom right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Chili's the assistant coach. He tends to uh, work a lot with some of the younger swimmers on the team, like my son Ben, as a freshman, uh, gets to know them the best. So the next the, the next event will be the hundred butterfly. Welcome back to the Midland Dow, Midland High Swim Meet at H.H. Dow uh, Natatorium here. I love that word. My, kids, my kids laugh at me. The Natatorium is the technical term for a swimming pool where swim meets are held. We're getting ready to start the next event tonight, which is the 100 Butterfly. This is event number six, the 100 Butterfly. I would like to announce too, before we get started, that in the meet so far, the total is, the score as of now is Dow High School, 58 points, Midland High School, 17 points. So it's 58 for Dow and 17 for Midland, but we still have about two thirds of the meet to go. I'll take a quick second um, as we get ready to, taking a moment of silence here. Excuse uh, us. It, right now, it's they're uh, doing their swim pink, uh, which is in recognition of uh, breast cancer awareness. 
Next, uh, I'd like also to announce here real quickly that this evening, we didn't get a chance earlier, but from the Midland High School, we had 10 seniors that were honored tonight from Midland High. They were John Becker, Rob Dingra, Mitchell Enns, Floyd Sage, Joey House, Justin Johnson, Vince Purs, Joe Reeves, Jacob Strebel, and Noah Serbrook. Those are the 10 seniors that were honored tonight in a night's nice festival. It looked a little bit painful, though, when they went through the, the they all got patted on the butt by the kickboard. Uh, a little tradition they have uh, at Midland High. It's, they definitely have a strong senior class. Uh, nearly half of their swimmers are graduating this year. Uh, right now, they're recognizing some parents uh, from the mid, uh, from the Dow High program that have uh, battled breast cancer in the past. Um, and right now, Aiden Saggers from Dow High uh, is the spokesperson, uh, informing us of uh, some facts about breast cancer and uh, uh, letting us know about how much uh, they rose uh, in uh, the swim pink this year. It sounded like they got over a thousand dollars. Good for them. Yeah, it's a great, uh, great event. You'll see. You'll notice just about every sport these days, from football to basketball to swimming, have wonderful events like this to help raise awareness and, and to raise money. So that uh, that's wonderful. Uh, last last year, it started for the swim team uh, because uh, Aiden's mom uh, was just recently diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. And uh, we decided that it was something that we wanted to do. And mm -hmm. uh, last year we, raised, we rose, I believe, $2,000. Wow. And uh, this year uh, got over 1000 again, so good stuff. Yeah, what a great thing. The swimmers are up in the first heat uh, for the 100 butterfly. In this first heat of the 100 butterfly, we have in lane two from Midland Dow, Christian Benneke. In lane three from Midland Dow, Steve Zhu. And in lane four from Midland Dow, Mr. Eddie Zong. And for those of you watching this, uh, this is the Midland High versus Dow High Swim Meet on MPS TV 190 on Charter or Channel 99 on AT&T U versus Midland. This event will be shown at the following dates and times. Saturday, February 14th, 11 a.m., 6.30 and 11 p.m. And then on Sunday, February 15th at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. For more dates and times or to stream this program online, check the... Midland Public Schools website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. Thank you, Ricky. You'll uh, you'll notice as you watch these young men do the butterfly, it's a it's a race that takes a tremendous amount of strength and actually coordination. To to coordinate your kick with the big motion with your arms is really critical in this race. As they finish up here, and the winner of this heat was uh, in lane three, Steve Zhu. Um, it is a beautiful stroke to watch when it's done well. It's one of the most um, difficult strokes to master along with breaststroke. Uh, it, it's one of the easiest uh, events in strokes to get disqualified in because there are so many components to your stroke. You have to keep both of your legs together the entire time you're swimming. You have to make sure both of your arms exit and enter the water at the same time. Right. Uh, when you're coming up to the wall, uh, you have to make sure that both hands touch the wall at the same time, okay. and then and it's just a very, very difficult event to uh, master. Do the, do, the, do the boys have to touch with both hands at the wall when they turn? Yes, okay. both hands at every wall. Um, now we are going to start heat number two. This is the finals heat of the 100-yard butterfly. In lane one, we have Ben Branstadt from Midland Dow. In lane two, Scott Joffrey from Midland. Lane three from Dow is Noah Ben. Lane four from Midland is Noah Sherbrooke. Lane five from Dow is Alec Owens. And lane six from Midland is Jared Holman. You'll notice too that on their start underwater, they do a series of dolphin kicks underwater in an attempt to try to propel themselves as far as they can. And you'll watch here on the butterfly when they turn both walls, you'll see the lead swimmer just reach that single red band across the, in the lane lines, you'll see a single red marker. And when those swimmers start, that marker is 15 meters out. 
and they have to be up out of the water by that red mark. Yes. So you'll notice when they start, some of the amazing swimmers will come up all the way at that red mark and because you're always faster underwater once you break the surface and you've got the resistance that yes. slows you down. So the really good swimmers can make it that whole distance. It looks like in lane one we have uh, Ben Brandsnatt uh, sneaking out. Swimming a great race. A, a great swim. He and Noah Bame are going to be coming in for a strong finish. And in first place, we have Ben Branstadt in lane one with a 59-1-5. Uh, following closely at second is Noah Bame with a one minute and one minute point eight two. And then in third from Midland, we have uh, Noah Serbrook with a 101.61. That was a great race. It looks like that was Ben. If you see a great finish there, there's a great finish for Ben, and that was his fastest time, it appears, tonight at breaking a minute at 59.15. And now we are going to be starting the 100-yard freestyle. This is four links of the pool, um, and we have five heats of this. Uh, we will be starting with lane three, uh, Jad Safadi from Midland Dow. Lane four will be Luke Drumright, also from Dow. And then lane five will be Matthew Bone, also from Midland Dow. And this we talked about earlier, we had the 50 freestyle, which was just a flat out splint, or sprint, excuse me. Um, if you need a splint, then you got another problem. Yeah. But uh, a flat out sprint in the 100 really is as well. Um, it's twice as far, but it really is um, sprint as fast as you can go the entire 100. Yes, it is. Um, and as a a great race uh, once again for the all-around swimmer. It is uh, a, an event that takes a little bit less skill because in freestyle you can swim any stroke you really wanted to. So uh, I guess if somebody wanted to swim 100 fly, they could do that instead of swimming the 100 freestyle. Right. Um, as long as they follow all of the rules that go to each uh, stroke, they're allowed to do that for freestyle. Right. As they get started here, uh, Ricky, do you know what the freestyle was originally called? A little trivia here. Oh, Before man. the freestyle, what was it called? I when I was a kid, I'm 49, and when I was a kid, it was called something other than freestyle. I would just guess the front crawl. It was called the crawl. That's, okay. exact, that's exactly right, the okay. crawl. And when swimming first started, the breaststroke, back in the late 1800s, the breaststroke was the first stroke, and an Englishman uh, went down to South America at about the turn of the century in about 1873 and saw some Native Americans from South America doing a scissor kick type event that looked like something looked like they were crawling, thus the name Crawl. He brought that back to Australia where he then called it the Australian Crawl. And from that on, uh, that became one of the, the hallmarks of swimming, the crawl, and eventually later was named the freestyle. I always would have thought that the first uh, stroke in swimming would have been the side stroke, knowing that it's the most generic stroke you can do. Yep. I uh, guess I was wrong on that one. <laughs> well, it was it was soon, actually. And looking this up, the side stroke was one of the first three. Really? It was, it was felt that you could do side stroke faster than the breast stroke, so that's where they tried to went from breast stroke to side stroke. I have a little trivia for you. How many days do you think it would take the Niagara Falls to fill up every single swimming pool in the United States? I don't know. Takes them three. Three, <laughs> three days, and it'll fill up every single pool in the United States. Wow, that's a great, that, that's a great piece of trivia. That, uh, that one I can remember. <laughs> and they're just, uh, Heat 1 is just finishing up in the men's 100-yard freestyle. That Luke, Rum, Luke Drumwright just finishing up. Very supportive team once again. The next event, uh, the next is Heat 2 of 5. This is event number 7, the 100 freestyle. In Heat 2, in lane 1, we have Seamus Bennett from Midland Dow, John Hopper from Midland Dow in lane 2, Noah Arthur in lane 3 from Midland Dow, Derek Yan from Midland Dow in lane 4, and Parker Thorson from Midland Dow in lane 5. Once again, I think I put my money on Midland Dow on this one. What do you think? <laughs> I think, I think Pretty good come, chance. we'll come out with the one, two, and three. 
So there you watch, uh, once again, Ricky, when you watch their start, uh, most of those young men were up even before the first red marker. But as the swimmers get better with each successive heat, you'll see them go further and further uh, in that underwater. Uh, the underwater is a very critical part in, your, in, your, in each of your events. Um, uh, I myself don't really have the best pullout, so I want to get above the, surf, the surface as quickly as possible. But then if you have somebody who has a very dominant kick, uh, they generally want to stay under the water until the second red marker so that they get the most um, impact from that uh, kicking. Because mm -hmm. uh, once you come above the water, it's just you got to break the plane and then just go as fast as possible. This is another one of those events another. that you really don't want to breathe much in. Right. Um, I, I remember when I was working with Gary, he would often tell me, you have about... Uh, two breaths each length, and that's about it. If you yeah. breathe more, you're just wasting oxygen. So, yeah. <laughs> that was a good race for uh, Aiden Saggers in lane three, who uh, took first place in that heat at the time of uh, 103. Or, no, Noah Arthur. Or Noah Arthur, I apologize. And now we are going to be starting heat three of five. This one does not have all Dow swimmers. Um, in lane one, we have Daniel Haynes from Dow. Uh, lane two is Drew Herschel from Dow. Lane three is Aiden Saggers from Dow. Lane four is Corey Clark from Midland. Lane five is Jonathan Gorman from Dow. And lane six is Jonathan Harkness from Dow. I apologize, I got one heat ahead. I was paying this attention to my son who's swimming in the next heat and lost sight of it. This is heat three of five. And watching these starts, most of them come up again just around the red marker. Yep. Uh, it's pretty typical uh, for newer swimmers especially. Uh, not everybody has had uh, swimming from age six right, right when they can pretty much start away uh, because Midland uh, lost their high school, or their, not their high school, their middle school programs for about six years. Okay. Um, this year is actually the first time since my oldest, or my uh, one of my brothers uh, was an eighth grader in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, so they're finally getting their uh, middle school programs for both guys and girls back up and running. And um, it'll this, make a big difference. I absolutely. Would think. Uh, uh, I believe Buffy Hall said there were about 40 swimmers in middle school this year alone. And there All right. was uh, a strong finish out in lane five with a 56. Much uh, better, nice improvement for Jonathan. John Gorman dropped two seconds in his 100 freestyle, good for him. Second place there in lane two was Drew Hersel. Drew also dropped uh, about four tenths of a second. Every swimmer, each race, just really wants to try to drop time. That's what they really go out every day, they practice hard, they come, and they want to try to drop time. Yes, it certainly it doesn't happen every time. It maybe doesn't happen every third time, but that's <laughs> the goal as they work on it. And the, the harder they work, the harder it is to get a better time right. for how much time they're putting into the pool. They're just, they're, they're dead tired. Yeah. So next we have heat four. In heat four in lane one is Ben Newman. In lane two from Midland, Connor Babin. In lane three from Midland Dow, Brigham Ostergaard. In lane four from Midland, Reese Bartos. In lane five from Midland Dow, Lucas Braganza. And in lane six from Midland, Mr. Brady Wing. One thing that I think is interesting is uh, the practice schedules for each team. It's, they're, they're so rigorous. Uh, Dow High School, I know, they have practice every single weekday after school for two hours, and sometimes right. they have dry land even after that. Um, and then every Monday morning and every Thursday morning, they have a morning practice uh, at starting at 5.15 in the morning, going until about 7. Right. Uh, luckily, uh, parents give them a fantastic breakfast afterwards, Good. but it definitely puts a toll on your body when you're in the water and you're training so much. They even have practice on Saturdays. Right. The only day off for either of these programs right. is Sunday. And I know, for example, in, in talking to my son tomorrow, the Midland schools are off tomorrow. 
But the Dow team is practicing twice tomorrow. Oh, that's... They practice uh, in the morning for two hours, and they come back in the afternoon for two hours as well. So it's <laughs> a very exhaustive, uh, exhausting day, that's for sure. They're definitely going to get their uh, five miles of swimming. That's in. exactly <laughs> right. We have a good swim from uh, three Dow High swimmers. In lane three, we have uh, Brigham Ostergaard coming in with a 54.76. And then in lane five, we have Lucas Braganza with a 55.77. And then in lane one, Ben Newman with a 56.81. All very good swims. <laughs> now we're getting ready for, the, ready for the final heat. This is heat five, the fastest heat of the 100 freestyle. In lane one from Midland Dow, Tyler Beefus. In lane two from Midland, Evan Haas. In lane three from Midland Dow, Nick Pixton. In lane four from Midland, Nick Burchard. In lane five from Midland Dow, Bo Matthews. And in lane six from Midland, Mr. Noah Shiver. And this is the final and fastest heat. Uh, let's see if Nick Pixton can break the 52nd mark in uh, under three. That was a very good start on lane two. <laughs> The, um, tell me just a little bit, I know you talked about how hard they're practicing and sometimes they swim when they're tired, when they've been practicing a lot, and when it gets close to the big meets at the end of the year, like the state meet, they tend to do um, a technique um, that tries to get them ready for the meet. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, every time you get close to an important meet, for majority of the, the swimmers, it'll be valleys, which is their conference mm -hmm. championships. Uh, and for those who already have state cuts, it will be two weeks prior to the state meet. Um, it's something that is called a taper. Uh, it's where you keep up the high intensity swimming and then you take off the distance. Okay. So each practice has the in high intensity training, but they have a lot less yardage, yardage. each practice. Okay. Except for those uh, poor individuals who have the distance events. Gotcha. They still do the practicing of 500 yard practice. They each, still have each to be, one. Yeah. They be, still have the, they still have the distance. Gotcha. Yeah, and the winner the winner of the freestyle tonight in lane three was Mr. Nick Pixton with a 5104 in second place in lane five, Mr. Bo Matthews, and in third place in lane one, Mr. Tyler Beepus. And now we are coming up with the longest event of the meet. Uh, it is the 500-yard freestyle. Uh, the 500-yard freestyle is a 20-length event per individual, uh, which is a little bit difficult to keep track of. So at the far end of the pool, you will uh, notice when the camera goes by that each swimmer has someone designated as their lap counter. So if they lose track... That's they what the small board is that they're holding there at yes. the end? Uh, that gives them some. That gives them a way to know what lap they're actually on. Um, in lane two, we have Nick Konovalenko from Dow. In lane three, we have Joey Park from Dow, and lane four, we have Grant Ostergaard from Dow. Now, one of the things that I've learned as I've watched swim meets uh, in the 500 and even in the bigger meets or in the longer events like the 1,000 or the 1650 is if you watch Coach, if you look down to the center of the pool, you'll see Coach Chili Smith standing there. When the kids that are really good at the 500, when they get close, they'll relay to those, correct me if I'm wrong, to those counters and tell them what to do with that counter board, whether to shake it up and down or sideways or to stay still. Which yeah, yes. Um, before each race, uh, when it's come to distance events, um, the coaches typically talk with their swimmers um, and they try to give them a certain pace to follow. Um, for someone like myself, I was trying to pace at be below 30 seconds of 50. Um, they would really hope that you could, you could hold around a 27 second, second 50 freestyle. And every time you kind of fall off of the pace that they want, uh, they would one, either tell you to kick, which could um, would typically be shaking up and down. Okay. Or they would tell you to um, 
monitor your breathing because if you breathe too much, you don't really focus on your stroke as much. Mm -hmm. um, and that's typically a side to side shake. Gotcha. Um, and then if uh, the coach notices that something's just completely whack, they just tell the counter just to shake it as hard as possible okay. or a little bit. And whatever the problem is, they, they try to give you some hand gestures every time you're breathing. So you want to look at your coach because mm -hmm. they give you a little bit of input on the side, especially for a long distance event. So, so each time you do a down and back or you do a 50, you have a split or a time in your mind for that 50 that you want to keep yes. at so you know what your pace is. Yes. Therefore, you don't go out swimming too fast and run out of gas halfway or vice versa, go too slow and end up uh, with too much energy at the end. It, it's really difficult in events like these um, because if you're just a little bit off your pace, it makes it so much more difficult to get back into the pace because I would imagine. You, you think you're going the right time and when you're not, you have to put so much more energy out. And if you feel like you're at the right pace, it just it, it throws off right. your uh, judgment on what speed you're really going at. Right. How many laps is this race? Uh, the 500 free is 20 lengths. Okay. Uh, the longest event in an indoor pool uh, for um, co or high school is the 500. Um, but at the Olympic and collegiate levels, they have the mile, which is the 1650. Uh, that is 66 lengths wow. of the pool. Uh, at that level, it's a definite achievement to get um, around 16 minutes. Okay. Um, so under 20 minutes is a pretty good time if you're swimming. When, the, when the you mile. get when you get to the mile, getting to a 20 minute uh, event or uh, time in the mile is a definite achievement. Um, and the 500 free itself, uh, a great time for a new swimmer to get under mm -hmm. six minutes. And then uh, as they progress in their skill, they achieve they attempt to achieve sub five minute times. Did you do much, Ricky, of the 500? Um, as a freshman and sophomore, it was one of my main events. Okay. I swam the, I, I was a distance swimmer. I swam the 200 free and the 500 free. Mm -hmm. um, it was not until my soft, the end of my sophomore year that my, uh, that Gary noticed that I had uh, more talent in the faster events. Okay. Uh, I, I ended up becoming a 100 and 200 freestyle okay. swimmer. Uh, I got to swim on two state relays at Dow High in the 400 free relays my sophomore, my senior year. And uh, it, sophomore year was definitely the change in distance to uh, sprinting. I know that uh, Coach Strickler during the season, um, at least it was rumored that each of the young swimmers, especially the freshmen new to the team, everybody, whether they thought they were a sprinter or a distance person, got to do the 500 at least once during the year just so that they can, number one, say they did it, and to see if they have any talent. You never know if you haven't done it. Uh, maybe that's an event that, uh, that you have. Uh, my son, I know, who fancies himself a, a sprinter, did it, and he <laughs> said, actually, he, it wasn't as bad as he thought. No. Um, Gary really likes to get the new swimmers that he doesn't have as much uh, experience in the water with. Uh, he, he likes to put them in as many events as possible. Um, uh, I, I know as a freshman and a sophomore, I swam in a much more diverse uh, amount of events than I did as a junior or senior. Um, in my senior year, I actually only swam four different individual events. Okay. And it was not off. If it was a big meet, I always swam the 100 free and the 200 free. Uh, it was very seldom that I swam anything besides freestyle. Yep. The only other event I had was the 100 fly. Right. If you, uh, I'm not sure if you heard, if you could hear on the broadcast, uh, they just rang a bell. It's traditional that on the final 50, uh, they ring a cowbell as the lead swimmer approaches the wall, and they'll do it even for the subsequent swimmers, and that just gives those swimmer a, a heads up that they've got one lap to go. And if you look at the counter board, you'll see that there's two orange squares. That also says, go, man, go. This is your last your last 25 sprint to the end. The, the last 100 is definitely where uh, the coach, if you're not doing something right, they're just gonna be shaking the board up and down as hard as possible. That, and that's when you just, you make it so you're what, you can't feel your, feel your legs or your arms at the end <laughs> of the race. Right.
Um, after each 500, the oh, swimmers get to have a warm down. Um, so they get their chance to recover a little bit. Um, so they're coming down while the next heat is preparing themselves for what is upcoming. Um, so as you can see, um, we have the replay of second and third place finishes. Uh, you can just see in their stroke that they're putting everything they can in the end of this race. Almost, uh, almost out of gas on that and just reaching down for every last little bit of energy that they've got here to finish. Oh yeah. Uh, now we're coming up with the final heat of the 500 free. Uh, in lane one from Dow is Zach Hoffman. Lane two from Midland is Ryan Heath. Lane three from Dow is Nehemiah Mork. Lane four from Midland is Eric Parsons. In lane five is Kevin White. Lane six is Rock Deep Dingra from Midland. It's definitely going to be a close race between those Dow swimmers uh, because uh, we have, uh, right now, it says we have a 454 swimmer and a 459. Right. Yep. And then uh, I know that uh, Zach Hoffman is notorious for uh, dropping time. Right. And this is not, not the typical event for Nehemiah Moore. He's typically a sprinter. And, yes, uh, yes. so him doing the 500 is a little, doesn't do it very often. But as you can see, it, it's, it's still very see. good at it. Yes. Pretty good at everything that he does. And it looks like in lane six, we have uh, Rob Deep Dingra swimming butterfly at the moment, trying to get a cut for uh, a race. Nice. And he's allowed to do that in this free because it is the freestyle, correct? Yes, yes. So you could do any of the four strokes that you want during the freestyle. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. If this was the breaststroke and he started to do that, he would be disqualified, correct? If you started with breaststroke? If he was doing, if this was the breaststroke race and he tried to do the butterfly, he would, he would be disqualified. Be disqualified yes. for, for free, just freestyle is like the name says. It's you're it's you're you're free to choose what stroke you want to do. Um, and if he's actually going to do a 500 butterfly, that is quite the accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's going to do a 500 or if he's just going to get a time for the 200 maybe. Or I'm not sure. Not really sure. sure. Do you uh, have any ideas that uh, you've got a talented son or a talented daughter or maybe yourself and you want to be a star? Uh, the friends of MCTV are hosting the fifth annual Midland Shining Stars Talent Show on Saturday, April 11th. MCTV will tape your performance in the studio and the program will play over the next couple months. You could bring your saxophone, you could bring your flute, uh, you could do a dramatic reading if you like. Um, viewers will be able to vote for their favorite talent online, basically an online talent show. Prove you have what it takes to be the next big thing. Call 837-3474 or email midlandstars at yahoo.com to sign up or get more info. Once again, we'll make a, a quick note that the coverage of this meet is made possible in part with a donation from both Little Caesars Pizza and, of course, the friends of MCTV. And also, you are watching the Midland High versus Dow High Swim Meet on MPS TV 190 on Charter or Channel 99 on AT&T versus Midland. This event will be shown at the following dates and times. Saturday, February 14th at 11 a.m., 6.30 and 11 p.m., and also on Sunday, February 15th at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. For more dates and times, or to stream this program online, check the Midland Public Schools website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. Thank you, Ricky. One, of, one other little thing you might, uh, as they're finishing up on the 500 here, if you look around the pool, you'll notice the young men swimming in different type of swimsuits. Some of them have the small speedo style swimsuit or brief. Others have the suit that you'll see goes almost to the knee, which is called a jammer. Um, there's not only different styles or sizes of suits, but there are different materials, and, and the cost of these suits can be very prohibitive. Yes. I, I have a daughter who swims as a seventh grader, and the racing suits are called laser suit by Speedo. Yes. And a suit for a young woman, a laser suit, runs almost $400. 
And the, the, the tough thing about it as a parent, these suits don't last forever. No, they don't. You, you, you buy a suit and you might get three or four races or three or four meets out of the suit and it loses its buoyancy and its water repellent and all the things that make it fast. Absolutely. Um, one thing uh, that I, I, I've learned over the course of my swimming career is that the different styles of suits have changed so much over the past few years. Um, when I first started swimming, I used uh, something called um, a, uh, it, was it was a Speedo, uh, it, wasn't even a, it wasn't even a razor, uh, it was um, just a fast skip. Yeah. So they, Speedo has come out with so some new technology actually recently that uh, they've used 33 different uh, Olympic level swimmers to develop a new suit called the Laser Racer X. Wow. So they got the feedback from all of these individuals to uh, determine what type of fabrics they needed to change to, what they needed to change about the feeling of um, each uh, suit, and it made it so that each swimmer uh, was able to get a little bit more races out oh, of okay. each suit. Okay, gotcha. Because I know from my experience with my suits, I... I would use them for a season, and after that, they didn't, they didn't do the trick anymore. Right. They just didn't repel the water, and then they would end up just slowing you down rather right. than helping you go as fast as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're finishing up here. We had uh, the winner of the heat is finished now. Uh, Nehemiah Mork finished with a time of 4.54.29, so he bettered his time uh, slightly. And also in second place in... Lane one is, uh, I believe, Zach Hoffman. Zach with the Hoffman. 505. With the 505. And in third place with 511 was Mr. Kevin White. And we still have going, believe it or not, in lane six from Midland High, Rob Dingra, who is still out there butterflying. I don't know how far along he is so far, but. I, I can't quite tell. Uh, but a quick correction. Uh, the Midland Public Schools website is actually www.midlandps.org. Once again, uh, Mr. Mr. Dingra in lane six is doing the is doing the butterfly uh, in an attempt to get a time because this is not an event that's offered at the high school level or offered very often anywhere else too. Uh, I don't I don't believe the 500 free is offered anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <if> I, <laughs> I can't really tell how far he how, no, how far I, along he is. I'm not sure either. He took he did get a little break there at the wall. He took uh, he's a, took he, a big he's got to need it. Yeah. I is, mean, the 200 butterfly is so difficult alone. Yeah. Um, I I believe the longest event for an IM is the 800 IM, which right. is 200 yards of each stroke. Oh, right. So I I can't imagine somebody needing to do. A 400 or a 500 right. butterfly. No, I'm wondering. Uh, Rob is a senior. Yes, I he is. I wonder if this is a senior, a senior or something. He was put up to this, or this was a goal that he set on my last meet. I'll, I'll do a 500. Maybe he lost a bet on something, and, and this was his punishment. Because I would think it's punishment <laughs> to do this race. I, I would guess that he uh, had a goal to yeah. say that he swam a 500 yard butterfly. The goal now is just to stay above the water. <laughs> The goal right now is just to finish. Oh, and he's still going. And if you look down, if we can see down at the uh, far end of the pool, we have Midland and Dow High swimmers all cheering right. along in this one. <laughs> it's pretty neat to see both of the schools down there rooting for them the same way. Sound this speaks for itself from them. Yes, it does. I'm guessing he's got one more link. 20 <laughs> 25 more meters. 25 yards. Here we go. I hope he doesn't have more than 25 yards. I'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice his, his legs aren't doing much anymore. Oh, not at all. Just whip.
And Ravdeep Dingra just finished a 500-yard butterfly in eight minutes and 39 seconds. Hey, Rob, what did you do at your senior meet? Oh, I, I swam the 500 butterfly. It must be a screw loose. Oh, man. Good for him. That's impressive. Yeah. Con congratulations to him. Our next event is event number nine. We're almost to the end here. We have event number nine is the men's 200-yard freestyle relay. This is a fast relay. There's two heats. Uh, this Each of the swimmers will swim a 50 a 50 yard uh, there'll be four swimmers and there'll be two heats this first heat is heat one of two uh, something that's really fun is normally you get that energy level from that last 500 freestyle or 500 butterfly really uh, during the relays uh, they are they, they come down to the end of the meet and the relays are really the most important part because once you get to these final two these, these last few events it, it could be one relay that determines right, right. who wins and who loses. In this, uh, in this first heat, we have... Ravdeep finally oh. got, was able to get out of the pool after his warm down. <laughs> <laughs> I think they brought a little lift in and lifted him out of the pool there to, <laughs> to give him a hand. Um, for this 200 freestyle relay, in lane three from Dow is Trevor Harkness, Derek Yan, John Hopper and Parker Thorson. And again, each of these swimmers, this is a freestyle relay, so they'll all be doing 50 yards of freestyle. In lane four from Dow, Aiden Saggers, Seamus Bennett, Jad Safadi, and Noah Arthur. As each swimmer comes to the end of their 50 free, they have something called a relay exchange. And um, if, as you're watching the screen, you can uh, see the swimmer on the block, um, they have to take one step up to the edge of the block and then push off. Um, but they have to make sure that the swimmer in the water actually touches the wall before oh. they leave the block. So it really comes down to a lot of hand-eye coordination, mm -hmm. understanding when and when not to go. Um, Is that, that something that you guys practice specifically at practice where those starts for relays? Uh, towards the end of the year, uh, it definitely is more and more focused on. Um, Gary is very proud of his relay exchanges for his teams um, because he's had so many close races in valleys and in the state meets that come down to the relay exchanges. Right. Um, uh, one of his favorite stories to tell me uh, is he had one of his girls' teams go down to the state meet and they were neck and neck with the team next to them. Uh, there was one young lady who uh, stepped up and just went. Um, <laughs> and the, the official just like, there's no way she didn't fall start. It's not possible. She can't get that time. So they disqualified her. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary comes up. He had a picture of the start. And the picture was so close that you could tell that there was one toe left on the, <laughs> on the one toe yeah. left right when her hand touched the wall. I'll be darned. So and Gary loves his relay exchanges. And, and that's the way that, the, that it's uh, officiated, is that you have to have something touching. It doesn't matter if it's a toenail. Okay. As long as something is touching the block, when the swimmer in the water finishes, it's a legal start. Right. Okay. I mean, I've also seen uh, a couple of events where uh, somebody accidentally went in uh, 50 too early yeah. in the 400 free relay. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, they kind of forgot what length they were on and landed right on top of their teammate. <laughs> I know uh, my son Ben, uh, when he swims relays, is pretty nervous about his uh, leaving uh, as a freshman for coach. He doesn't want to get the team disqualified. <laughs> if he left too soon, pretty fearful of what the next day of practice would be like. He should be afraid. Uh, <laughs> la last year, we had a practice where there were three swimmers who disqualified the relays in the meet before, and uh, they all had to swim a 400 IM. Oh, no. I've heard that's the punishment <laughs> at practice for a lot of things, is having to do a 400 IM. Or a 500 free, depending oh, on the swimmer. Gotcha. Huh. Um, and now we're coming up with the final heat of the 200-yard freestyle relay. In lane one from Midland Howe is Brigham Ostergaard, Jonathan Gorman, Daniel Hayes, and Christian Benneke. In lane two from Midland is Justin Johnson, Joey House, Jacob Striebel, and Noah Serbrook. 
In lane three from Dow is Bo Matthews, Noah Bain, Lucas Braganza, and Ben Brandstadt. In lane four from Midland is Joe Reeves, Evan Haas, Mitchell Enns, and Rob Deep Dingra. He's already back in the water. And, and then in lane five from Midland Dow is Ben Newman, Drew Herschel, Nikoi Nahida, and Kevin White. Then in lane six from Midland uh, is John Becker, Sage Floyd, Matthew Lyle, and Ryan Heath. Can't believe Rob Deep's already in another event. I guess, I guess. He's glutton for punishment there, isn't he? <laughs> he must be. So this is a, uh, the, I believe that the time to qualify for the state meet in the, this is 1 minute 32 seconds, point nine nine. So that's what okay. that team is shooting for, is to try to get that time which qualify, qualifies them for the state meet at the end of the year. That seems pretty quick this year. Lane three from Dow has a good time so far of 113. After two swimmers, or three swimmers actually, I yep. like. Yep. <laughs> it looks like a good race between uh, lane four and five. Yeah, yep. Neck and neck. Yeah, it looks like Dow, did Dow just pull? Oh, it's gonna be close, great race uh, for I, second place. I remember uh, talking to Coach Welter and he said that their 200 free relay is the, the team to looks watch. Like, looks like photo foe, oh. looks like Dow, looks like Dow got it. Very close Second race. Second place, great race. Uh, but Coach Welter definitely uh, likes to brag about his relay teams. Uh, they, their their um, relay team gets to compete at Miska's this yeah. upcoming weekend. Watch how close down there at the end. Great finish by great, both swimmers. Great finish. And okay. now I think Rob Deep finally gets to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is when, remember we talked about those hot tubs. This is when you need one of those oh, to go yeah. sit out in the hot tub. Or just someone to give you a massage. Yeah, that work that's too. A, that's exactly right. Uh, all right. Next event is uh, event number 10, the 100-yard backstroke. Uh, this is four lengths of the pool on your back. Um, you have one chance to uh, flip onto your stomach before the wall um, and then go back to your back and continue the race. Um, in lane two, we have John Hopper from Dow, uh, Nikoi Kahida from Dow, and Koki Nishida from Dow. You notice this is the only race where the swimmers will actually start in the water on the blocks, and the start is really a critical start. You see a lot of different styles. Some are up out of the water, others are in the water. If you notice the swimmer there in lane four, he came out front, but he was underwater the longest, and I think in the backstroke, it's so critical if you can get your, your underwater and get out there as far as you can. In fact, there's a story back in the, um, uh, the mid-1900s and 1920s, uh, there was a backstroker, uh, not from the United States, but from somewhere else, before the rule was changed, who could do a full 50 meters underwater. Oh, man. And he won. He set the Olympic record for the backstroke, really? for the 100 backstroke, and he only breathed once or twice the whole thing. All it was after underwater. that. All underwater. It was after that that they finally put the little red markers that we talked about, and initially it was 10 meters. You could okay. only go 10, and then sometime shortly after that in the 1950s, they increased it to 15 meters okay. where it stands right now. Interesting. Uh, one, this, a little information about the starts of each of these races. Um, the, the racer has a choice of where to place his hands. He can right. place it on the wall itself or on the block. Um, he just has to make sure that his toes are below the surface of the water. And then after that, he can be in any, really, essentially any position for the start. Okay. They're getting ready to uh, getting ready to start the second heat of the hundred backstroke. Uh, the winner of that heat in lane four was Koki Nishida, uh, senior. Great job, Koki. He got a best time on that one by uh, five one hundred yes, to the second. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Technically, it was better. That's all that counts. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, starting of the second heat uh, in lane one from Midland Dow is Steve Zhu. In lane two from Midland is Nicholas Burchard. In lane three from Midland Dow is Tyler Beefus. In lane four from Midland is Zach O'Dell. And lane five from Midland Dow is Alex Owens. 
Uh, as you watch that start, uh, notice that in lane three, still uh, his his start was a little bit different than anyone else's. He got his entire body out of the water Water. before he even started. Hmm. So he right. he's trying to emulate the start from on top of the block. Right. Yep. And yeah. he he uh, has one of the best kickouts. Also, he goes as far as he can underwater and uh, uses that dolphin kick that we talked right. about in Butterfly. Um, On his and, back. And uses that before he starts the flutter kick, which is the legal kick after your pullout in uh, oh, okay. backstroke. <laughs> Got a little someone in the way while we're watching yep. his turn. <laughs> You'll notice now as the, the Midland swimmers in the blue cap tell me he takes one arm pull when he flips over to the freestyle, but if he does more than one, he'll be disqualified. And there is uh, Tyler Beefus goes into his finish. He uh, finished with a 57-7-6. And uh, the fun thing to watch about their finish is when he goes to touch the wall, he lunges backwards and sends his entire body underwater mm -hmm. while he goes to finish. Yep. They recently did change that rule too, that you can't be 100% under the water. Yeah. On the backstroke, correct, this year. Some part of your body has to be above the water. That was changed on, on, the, on, back, the, finish? on the backstroke finished. I did not know yep. that. Yep, yep, it was new. My daughter backstrokes and hasn't been disqualified in it, but it's been close. Yeah. So the next event is we're going to start the breaststroke, event number 11. Event number 11 is the men's 100-yard breaststroke. There's two heats, heat one. In lane two is Trevor Harkness. In lane three is Grant Ostergaard. And in lane four, Nicholas Konovalenko. And breaststroke is one of the most difficult strokes to uh, get the technique down uh, because they're like, like butterfly, there are a lot of moving parts. Um, right. the, the beginning of the race that they're going through right now is something called the pullout where they dive into the water and they pull their arms down to their side. Mm -hmm. And while they do that, they do a butterfly kick. Right. Um, that gives them a little bit extra momentum. And then as they're coming to the surface, they do they complete the full breaststroke, uh, uh, actual stroke. And then once they complete that, their body has to be at the top of the water. Water. Um, and then they go through the moment of the movement of the frog kick and then the like the ice cream scoop mm -hmm. yep. uh, to really complete the stroke. Definitely yeah. the most technical start, isn't it? It's the, most, turn techni at the, it's wall. the most technical event in right. all of swimming, really. Uh, and I, I noticed as my son is a breaststroker, and I notice as you watch here, the two, the two out front have a very similar style, but the styles in breaststroke can be so different. Some heads come out of the water in a violent fashion, very fast. Others push forward more. Their head, chin barely yes. leaves the water. And what's interesting is one doesn't seem to be better than the other. It's the individual swimmer all has their style, it seems. Uh, what it really comes down to in breaststroke is uh, the kick. Mm -hmm. um, right. If you have a more powerful kick, you're able to contort your body, and you're able to contort your body differently. Yeah. It yeah. gives you the, the greater amount of momentum because if you can get more of your body out of the water, there's less drag. And propels um, you so much further. And if you can make your body really as small as possible as you're yep. entering the water and then increase it as you're going out to displace more yep. water behind you, you have a better chance of uh, going faster right. in each pole. That was a great finish there between those two that we just witnessed there too. This is the second heat. The second. This will be our final individual event of the night. In lane one, Jacob Prezu from Midland Dow. In lane two, Vincent Prez from Midland. In lane three, Noah Bem from Midland Dow. This is his specialty. In lane four, Scott Joffrey from Midland. In lane five, Ben Newman from Midland Dow. And in lane six, Jared Holman from Midland. It looks like uh, the Midland Dow swimmer are having a little bit of fun uh, cheering on one of their teammates before he even gets in the water. <laughs> Again, this is our last last individual event of the evening. When we're watching the start, look at each individual as they enter the water and how long they uh, pull out through the pool. Yeah. Right. Um, in lane three, he got about five yards away from the second red marker right. before he even came up to the surface. Uh, in breaststroke, 
when you go to the wall, you have to make sure that two hands touch the wall at the same, same time, time before okay. I wondered about you that. can go uh, to right. the next length. I wondered about that. If you look at Noah Bem in lane three, the breaststroke is kind of his specialty. It oh, yes. seems like uh, there's always a couple that uh, this, is their, this is their event that they really excel in. Breaststroke is definitely a uh, technical event, and if you have the breaststroke down, that's how you spend most of your time. Go, Ben! I had to give a shout out to my son who's in this <laughs> event here. So this is uh, coming down to the last, coming down to the last stretch. There's a good race between Ben and Jacob in lane one and lane five. And it looks like uh, coming in first, we have um, Noah, Noah Bame at uh, 103. 103. And a close second and third at uh, a 109 for Jacob and a 110 for Ben. Actually, I think it was Ben in lane. Ben took second lane five with a 109. And oh, Jacob excuse me. Jacob was in lane one. No, that's okay. All right. Good swim great from job. both of them. A lot of pink caps out front. That's great. Okay. The next race, and this is our final race of the night, is a long re it's the longest of the relays this evening. This is yes. the men's 400 yard freestyle relay. Each swimmer is going to swim a 100 freestyle. The 400 free relay is definitely, I think, the most fun event. Uh, it's, I mean, it's great that it's the last event of the meet. You finally get to leave afterwards. Right. But it, it, it really comes, this is when the team really comes together and uh, supports you because no one else has to be in the water at this point. So right. there's no excuse for you not to be cheering. Right. Uh, as we get ready for this race, uh, in lane two from Midland Dow, we have Daniel Haynes, Jonathan Harkness, Matthew Bone, and Noah Arthur. And in lane three from Dow, we have Grant Ostergaard, Eddie Zong, Christian Benneke, and Nick Kunivalenko. And then in lane four from Dow, we have Steve Zhu, Koki Nishida, Alex Ogin, Owens, and Luke Drumright. As they're racing here one last time, just to make sure if, if you want to uh, get this or to have your friends and family to watch in the future, um, you're again watching Midland High School versus Dow Swimming tonight at Dow High School. Um, this is going to be shown on MPS TV 190 on Charter or Channel 99 on AT&T UVerse in Midland. This event will be shown at the following dates and times. Saturday on Valentine's Day. What a better thing to do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> February 14th, 11 in the morning, 6.30 and 11 p.m. Take your sweetheart and watch the swimming. <laughs> um, also then on Sunday, February 15th at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. For more dates and times or to stream this program online, check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org. Midland Yep, and then also uh, the coverage of this meet is made possible in part with a donation from Little Caesars Pizza and the friends of MCTV. And then also, if you want to be a producer of MC, or this, actually, sorry, excuse me, this meet is being produced by MCTV uh, by its volunteers and its staff. And if you would like to work on a show like this one, uh, we have uh, an orientation and studio training class on March 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, to learn more, visit MPS's, uh, or, uh, MCTV's website, uh, www.cityofmidlandmichigan.gov slash MCTV, or follow them on Facebook. Uh, you can call them at 837-3474 or come visit them in the MCTV studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. And as we have just a minute here before this ends, I'd like to give a shout out one more time to our graduating seniors this evening from Dow High School, Mr. Zach Hoffman, Mr. Koki Nishida, and Mr. Brigham Ostergaard, as well as Jake Davidson. Good luck going forward. From Midland High, Mr. John Becker, Mr. Rob Dingra, Mitchell Enns, Floyd Sage, Joey House, Justin Johnson, Vince Purs, Joe Reeves, Jacob Striebel, and Noah Serbrook. Good luck to all of you uh, as you move on in your college careers. 
And just looking across the pool right now, um, uh, on the wall there's the records from Midland and Dow and then also the pool. Um, one of the really fun things is you can see the, the change in speed over the past few years. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the most notable names really on that board is from Dow High, and it's Brad Craig. Right. Uh, Brad Craig is uh, actually swam with the U.S. national team at the Pan Am uh, meet in 2014. Right. Um, he had the fastest 100 breaststroke and 200 breaststroke uh, the, starting the long course season uh, mm -hmm. last year yeah. and w got lucky enough to go to uh, some Olympic trials and then compete for the United States. And that was his specialty, wasn't it? The oh, breaststroke yes, the was, breaststroke. I see his name up there on some other things. Um, uh, the, the IM, of course, we talked yes. about breaststrokers being, a, being good at the IM. He's got the record there, too. He, ha he had some records uh, in the... It looks like the 2 IM, the 100 fly, and then the 100 breaststroke. Uh, I remember a few years back he had uh, a couple other records on there that got beaten by some uh, notable D1 athletes uh, by uh, uh, Michael Pixton, Jackson Gothi, right. and uh, Ben Martin. Um, ben Martin broke his pool record uh, a couple years ago in the 200 IM. Yep. It is, it is still remarkable, I think, that if you look at there with the, with the, revolu or the evolution of swimsuits and, and the starting blocks and everything better, you still see records up there from uh, 1977 and 1980 on the Midland side that yes. have stood for a long, long and time. And the, the really fun one is the 50 freestyle record for Midland Dow, the 1995 right. Kurt Bonert record. Yep. Yep. Uh, I know Nehemiah Merkin. Uh, Jackson Gothi, both been, wanted. They, they were hunting that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Jackson I, Jackson Gothi just missed it as a senior at his yep. uh, final state meet, and then Nehemiah Mork has been trying to beat that one for the past few years. Within a couple tenths, that's for sure. Yes. Congratulations to those three heats from Dow. All did uh, all did well. This is the final race of the night. This is heat two of the men's 400-yard freestyle relay. In lane one from Dow High, Joey Park, Aiden Saggers, Drew Hersel, and Jonathan Gorman. In lane two from Midland, Evan Haas, Eric Parsons, Noah Scheiber, and Nick Burchard. In lane three from Dow, Nehemiah Mork, Nick Pixton, Tyler Beefus, and Lucas Braganza. In lane four from Midland, Noah Surbrook, Joe Reeves, Michael Enns, and Rob Deep Dingra. How neat is that for those four? All four seniors swimming one of their last relays yes. together. In lane five from Dow, Zach Hoffman, Kevin White, Jacob Krizuk, and Brigham Ostergaard. And in lane six from Midland, Joey House, John Becker, Matthew Lyle, and Jacob Strebel. Coming into the last event, this will be the last time some of these students will ever swim in this pool uh, for a competition. Um, because uh, the Saginaw Valley ch uh, Championships are Saginaw at Valley, Saginaw right, Valley. Right. Um, with their newly renovated pool. Uh, it's the primary location for the Tri-Cities invite and then yep. the Saginaw Valley Championships. Yep. And then um, the state meet, I believe, for Division Two is in Holland this year? Yes, I believe so. Yep. Uh, and so they no longer have uh, a meet here after tonight. Right. I see you have a, I see Ricky, you have a Cardinal on your shirt there. Yes, so I do. You're familiar with that Saginaw Valley pool. It's a beautiful facility. I love that pool. Uh, I definitely have to admit that my favorite pool in the state of Michigan is the Holland Aquatic Center. Ah. Uh, I've always enjoyed that pool. It's, it's a very beautiful facility. And uh, this upcoming weekend, they, you guys actually get to go down to uh, the Miska meet at Eastern Michigan. Right, yeah. I was just going to, I was just going to mention at the, at the, I think it's the Michael Robb Pool at Eastern Michigan University uh, this weekend on Saturday is an, a special event called the MISCA Meet, and that stands for the Michigan Intercollegiate Interscholastic Interscholastic Coaches the uh, Swim Coaches Association. Swim Coaches Association, yeah. and this it's is a helpful. special meet that the kids that the boys have to qualify for. Um, I believe there are 11 from the Dow team, so only 11 out of the 40 
that are qualified to go, and I know that Midland has a relay team that is going to yes, the event they do. as well. The, the really fun thing about the Michigan meet is it's a combination of Division One, Two, II, and Three right. schools. It's everyone in the state competing all at one meet. It's a great atmosphere because you're against swimmers that are so closely right. uh, or so close to you in your individual time for your event that you just push each other to the absolute limit. Uh, this, last year at the Miska meet, I, I was in a heat with uh, a fellow swimmer uh, from Dow High, yeah. and we, we were just on each other's tails the entire time. Yeah, I've heard that, and so you're, you're swimming against the best competitors in high school from all three divisions. Yes. Um, in one meet, pretty busy meet from what I understand. Oh, yes. It's a busy pool. Hundreds of swimmers, and it, the meet lasts forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. Get to experience it on Saturday and at noon. We have our uh, last swimmer in the yep. pool in lane three for Dow. And uh, I believe this is Lucas, Lucas Braganza, who's finishing up for Dow in the 100, doing this last 100 free here. And you just saw Rob Deep Dinger dive back into the pool. Right, once he's again. Got, he's got to be exhausted today. <laughs> <laughs> so the time that uh, the Midland team once again would be shooting shooting for in this event in the 400 freestyles, a 326 would be the number that they would get need to get to get a state qualifying time. It looks like they got a pretty good chance. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, if you look up at the board down there, uh, at the record board, the, the time difference between the state cut and the actual records yeah. is quite astonishing. Uh, yeah. A Midland Dow record is uh, a 306, and this right. pool record looks like it's a 311. So very big time difference. Little disparity there, in, for sure. Uh, the high athletes. Uh, yeah. I, I know last year at the state meet, the 400 free relay, there were the times were just unbelievable. The top three teams were all around a 305. Five. And uh, finishing off that uh, off that race in lane three, the winning team from Dow, Nehemiah Mork, Nicholas Pixon, Tyler Beefus, and Lucas Braganza. Um, second place in lane five from Midland Dow was Zach Hoffman, Kevin White, Jacob Krizuk, and Brigham Ostergaard. And in third place in lane four from Midland, Noah Serbrook, Michael Enns, Ravi, Rava Dingra, and Joe Reeves. And we have our last uh, relay finishing, and uh, we'll have a couple minutes until they finalize all of the scores, and we can get those to you. Right. Um, in well, the meantime, I'd like to, like to let you know that you have been watching the Midland versus Dow swim meet on MPS TV. Uh, 190 on Charter on, or Channel 99 on AT&T U-verse in Midland. Uh, this event will be shown at the following dates and times, Saturday, February 14th, 11 a.m., 6.30 and 11 p.m., then Sunday, February 15th from 10.30 a.m., or starting at 10.30 a.m. and also at 7.30 p.m. For more dates and times or to stream this program online, check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandpublics.com midlandps.org Thank you uh, very much. We're just waiting for the score. I did hear one of the teams, but I didn't hear the other one. So we'll try to get that for you here in just one second. Uh, my name is Jeff Newman. Um, it's been a pleasure tonight being able to, uh, to talk and to try to teach you a little bit what we know about swimming and try to add some color to this very fun, festive event and wish these seniors good luck. And I'm Ricky Knopf, and uh, here on the pool deck, we're seeing that all of the swimmers are going to be giving a, a brief congratulations. Um, uh, I don't know that we know the final score, um, but it looks like we have uh, a final um, the meet ended with uh, a Dow High School victory, and we will get the scores shortly. Um, but thank you again for listening. Uh, this game or the coverage of this meet was made possible in part with the donations from Little Caesars Pizza and the friends of MCTV. Um, and if any of you are so interested, uh, this is being produced by the MCTV volunteers and staff. And if you would like to be one of us, come to our next orientation and studio training class on March 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Learn about MCTV, how to become a TV producer, and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. 
The cost is just $45, which includes your first year access membership fee. And then call 837-3474 or come down to the MCTV's studio in the lower level of Grace A. Dow Memorial Library and, le and you can learn more at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. And our final score today for Midland Dow, 147 to Midland High, 36.